Lord. I'm going to share our screen and kind of take us from there. Now, as you may have seen this week, I posted the recordings from Monday and Tuesday. And that was uh, the important thing about that is if you did not do the Excel assignment this week with me live, then you got the recordings there. I did the first two here and the second two there. And just as a reminder, when you make a new Excel document, it's called a workbook. And then each of the sheets in the document, because you can have many sheets in a workbook, is called a worksheet or a spreadsheet. Spreadsheet and worksheet mean the same thing, okay? So uh, we did two sheets on Monday, and we did the other two sheets for this assignment on Tuesday. So if you did that, great. If you didn't do it, all you gotta do is open up my Zoom here, open up Excel. You can do the online only version of Excel. That's what I was using. Um, you can do the full version, which looks a tiny bit different. Uh, and it's really easy. We're just doing some elementary beginner Excel. That's what we're doing. So if you did that, turn it in, great. Now I'm going to go over to our week 14. So that was this assignment right here. I talked about this briefly here, the Excel notes. I'm gonna just take a quick look at this here for a moment. There is a little, um, real, it's really important, watch this video. It'll help you understand formulas and functions better. But I'm gonna open up these notes I shared with you. Even though this is not an assignment to turn something in, do make sure you take a look at this. So uh, this is just the basics of Excel. Now cut and write, mostly we're gonna talk about formulas and functions. What, actually a function is a type of formula, to be honest with you. So let's go over a few basics here. Somewhere in here it should say, and if it doesn't, I'm gonna tell you right now, every single formula, which includes all functions, starts with an equal sign, always. There's always an equal sign. When you gotta make a formula or a function, function's a type of formula, you put up an equal sign first, end of story. Now, then what you do is you can either, you usually have to have, you have to have at least one cell reference. So at least one part of your formula is gonna have to be like a B3 or a C7 or D1 or something. Then you can add it and the addition can be to another cell. So you can take like B2 plus B3. The addition could be to a number like B2 plus eight. Uh, same with subtraction, same with multiplication, same with division. So you can take A2 divided by A3. You could do A2 times A3. You can be A2 minus A3. And just like with any mathematical formula, there's something called order of operation. So if uh, what ha how that works is um, when there's a complex formula with a bunch of stuff in it, It'll go from left to right. It'll do all multiplication and division first. Then it'll go back and do addition and subtraction. So if you want that to be different, you have to use parentheses like I put right here. So take this example right here. If there were no parentheses, it would go from left to right and it would do the multiplication first. So it would take C5 times D5, then it would add it to B5. That was going to give you a different answer than if you put in these parentheses. But if you're doing something that, you know, let's take this and add to that, then multiply it by something else, then you're going to need parentheses. So it does this first and then multiplies. That should be a basic reminder from a math class you took a long time ago. You know, you should have covered that a long time ago. Okay. I talked about most of that first page the other day. So I'm going to just, touch on a few things here. We're not doing any charts or graphs this week and we're not doing any functions this week, but we are gonna get into some next week. So a function is where you have a pre-made formula for doing things like sum adds up stuff, average will average it, uh, count, that's a typo, there's no A in count. So just count data range, max will go through and go through a range of cells and say, you know, which one is the biggest number in there. Men will go through a range of cells and say, which one's the smallest number. And if I may not even cover in this class, because this is more of a computer use class than a computer lit class, and that's a little more complicated. So uh, what is a range? A range, you see the parentheses here? 
that'd be like A1 to A10. So I mean, every cell from the top left to the bottom right between A1 and A10 is part of that range. So if you're doing a, an average function, would average all the numbers in those cells. If you're doing a sum function, would add them all up. Okay. Uh, so that just gives you a little idea that we'll talk more about that next week. The other big thing Excel is used for is charting and graphs. You can make pie charts, column charts, bar charts, and so on. It's actually very easy to make a really nice chart or graph in Excel, and we'll be making at least two of them, but it won't be this week. So um, just give you an idea what's going on there. Okay, so the only last thing this week, if you did all that, hopefully you did, is generation like, which is actually a fun thing to do in my opinion. So generation like is this um, documentary. It's about <clears throat> 50 minutes or so <clears throat> long. And it's all about social media and teens and the business side of it and likes and people wanting attention and people wanting to support things that they believe in and big corporations using it for advertising and to build up a fan base and how a celebrity might use it to get information out or promote things. Uh, so it's kind of that whole big picture, okay? People want attention, they're posting stuff to get attention, maybe even make money online. <clears throat> um, they're sharing things, they're liking things. The big companies that run all this are literally collecting data about you. When you click, I like pizza, it starts saying, hey, this person likes pizza and they like Coca-Cola and they like Britney Spears and they like Justin Bieber and they like the Hunger Games and they like whatever else. And then they can market to you. Oh, here's Justin Bieber's new album. Let's put an ad pop up. Here's a um, Domino's pizza ad, you know, with a coupon, things like that. So they use it for marketing. Okay, so all that they, there is all playing a role. Now they cover several stories in there. One is they cover is a girl who is a really big fan of the Hunger Games. So she sees a contest to be like one of the top 100 fans of the Hunger Games. And to do that, you have to do a lot of stuff. Think of it as almost being like in the scouts and you're trying to work your way up badges and stuff to get to the highest level of scouting. So she's doing all this social media posting and tweeting and retweeting and all kinds of things going on. And as she gets badges, she moves up and then she becomes you know, one of the top 100 fans of the Hunger Games. Now, at the same time, she's helping promote the Hunger Games. Now, I might say, why would you do that today, Mr. Rio? This documentary is from 2014. So at that time, Hunger Games was a big deal. Okay. So, um, so it's from that. There's another one where there's a guy named Tyler Oakley, who happens to be from Michigan originally. He lived over at Jackson, went to Michigan State. He started on YouTube just making fun videos and got attention and started getting followers and likes and fans and whatever. And he just turned into a whole full blown business. So he's got a channel and he makes money and he gets sponsors and he gets advertisers. And, you know, he, he was one of those one YouTubers. Okay. Another one that goes on there is this uh, young kid from a relatively low income family in Los Angeles. He started with skateboard videos where he made a little bit of money and got a little bit of free stuff for his followers and likes and all that. But then he started making inappropriate videos, things that a kid should not really probably be doing. But it got him a lot of attention and a lot of followers and probably made more ad revenue off of it because you can make money on these sites. And so then there is kind of a moral thing. It's like, OK, he's making money, but is this right? And you'll see some, a little, something near the end where a uh, girl who uh, sings, a very young girl, like eighth grade, is also trying to become like a YouTuber, Instagram, whatever, and her mom's helping her. And you'll see a little bit about that. Then you'll see about an already established celebrity um, who is in the movie Vampire Diaries, I think, and Ian Summerholder. So he's already a big star. He already got millions of followers, but he's using social media to not only promote his TV show and his career, but also promote charitable things he does and stuff like that. And then you'll see a few other stories and examples in there too. So it starts out with a bunch of teens and talking about posting stuff and counting likes and why do some people get more likes than others and girls tend to get more likes than guys and this and that. So. 
So it's called Generation Like. It's from about six, seven years ago. All you do is watch it, and I don't even have you write about everything. I just have you write about, I don't know if you guys can see this. I just opened up Generation Like questions. You write a good sized paragraph about this here, about the Hunger Games fan. You write one about the kid making videos, uh, skateboarding, and some inappropriate videos. And then you write about um, the famous actor I just told you about, Ian Summerholder. And then you share your opinion about some of this. So it's like four paragraphs. If you want full credit, make sure you hit the minimum, however many sentences I ask for each one and, and do a good job. And you should enjoy that. And that's it. So it's a nice way to wrap up the week. Pretty easy assignment. It wasn't, it was a pretty easy week to be honest with you. Next week, we'll do some more Excel. I don't know if we'll finish up Excel. We're going to start getting into some internet stuff. I didn't add any new internet stuff other than generation like, which is connected to the internet because we were talking about the internet and the web and social media and all that. So this is, this is part of that too, but that's the only one I included this week. So if you haven't done so already, enjoy that, watch it. Um, get the Excel in if you haven't turned it in already or finished it. Look over these Excel notes, watch that little video about formulas and functions, especially since we're going to be doing more of that next week. So I, I'm back to just me here. I don't know if you guys got any questions about anything. You can either unmute yourself or put it in the chat. But if not, that's pretty much it. So um, I'm glad you guys made it here today. Um, it's Thursday already. Uh, of course, we don't do we don't do these on Friday. There will be a HCTV coming out tomorrow. I'm working on. There will also be a student of the month video coming out maybe later today, and we'll have our next Zoom meeting on Monday, and that will be May third. So boy, oh boy, we're hitting we're gonna hit May. So take care, Colin. Take care, Aiden. Take care, Sarita. Take care, JD. Take care, Hanson. Take care, Matt. Um, I don't know if I missed anybody. Colin, take care. Yep. So I'll see ya. You okay today, Sarita? Doing better? Yes. Oh, good. I'm just stopping.